My name is Dori Klesis, and I'm with the Mount Sinai Health System in New York. I'm with Dr. Ari Greenspan here at the Aspen Ideas Festival. He's a gastroenterologist at Mount Sinai, and he'll be talking about the microbiome. So, welcome. Thank you. Tell us what the microbiome is. The microbiome is a complicated collection of microbes and the DNA that involve those microbes and how they interact with the human host. So it really is sort of a, a multi-species consortium. And when we talk about the microbiome, we really focus about the gut microbiome. So we're talking about all the microbes and their DNA and the human cells and our DNA and how they interact in the human gut. So um, basically these, um, the DNA and the cells or the... So it, it, it's a little complicated. Yes, yeah, so explain, they're all in our bodies. All of it is within our bodies. Mm -hmm. And so uh, there's all these complex interactions that take place between the human cells and the microbe cells. Uh, and there's a lot of crosstalk and there's communication. And Who talks with each other, the DNAs or the microbes? That's another good question. <laughs> it's a little bit of both. Um, we can affect them and they can certainly affect us. So it's a, is it sort of a breeding ground for good health or bad health or? Well, when things are going right, it's a breeding ground of good health. Uh, the microbes actually help us in a lot of ways. They help digest certain sugars and certain starches. They help teach us what is good and what is bad. Teach us how to upregulate or downregulate our immune system. Mm. And really for the first time we're beginning to we're beginning to understand how important this new organ is, the microbiome, in keeping us healthy. Well, we've started to hear about the term a few years ago. When did it become part of the public discussion and consciousness? So it turned out it's been on the fringes of medicine, this whole idea of manipulating the microbiome via a fecal transplant. Um, that's been around for actually a long time, but on the fringes of medicine. Mm -hmm. um, it's only been in the past 10 years or so that people have really begun to to focus on the complex interactions between the bugs, the bacteria, the microbes in our gut, and how they affect us. So you're a gastroenterologist and someone comes to you with a problem, when would you even do the fecal transplant? In, there's only one condition that we would use a fecal transplant. And again, a fecal transplant is where we take somebody's healthy stool and we deliver it to somebody who is unhealthy to bring them back to health. The power of poop. The power of and poop. And you're known for that. It's a, one, it's a <laughs> wonderful thing. Um, but there's only one condition that we use it, and that's for an infection called Clostridium difficile or what we call C. diff. Mm -hmm. It's a very, very bad infection. It can cause uh, horrific diarrhea. Um, it kills about 15 to 30,000 people a year just in the United States. Well, wouldn't you take antibiotics for that? So yes, that's the first line therapy, and sometimes even the second line therapy is to give antibiotics. The problem with this infection is that even if you treat it successfully with antibiotics, there's a good percentage of people who will get the infection back pretty quickly, mm -hmm. within a couple of weeks after finishing their course of antibiotics. Mm -hmm. And then they get stuck in this recurrent cycle. So they get recurrent C. diff infection. And that's a very, very bad infection to have. Um, and what we found is that by restoring, repopulating the gut with healthy bacteria, we can eliminate the infection with an incredibly high success rate. So for a person who has normal health, how would you know if you have good a good microbiome or a bad microbiome? Is there diet you should be aware of? Should you go for testing? How do you know that everything's working? So that's a great question and I get that question a lot in my practice. Um, right now we don't really have a good way of saying you have a good microbiome or you have a bad microbiome. Mm -hmm. And it's really hard to decipher what does it even mean to have a good microbiome mm -hmm. versus a bad microbiome. And we're not sophisticated enough in our analysis to, what, to, to test whether somebody has good, healthy bacteria or bad bacteria. So we don't typically recommend that people get their 
their microbiome tested because we just don't know what it means, at least at this point in time. But should let's say if you're on antibiotics, they tell you you should eat yogurt to keep everything working inside. Are there some things you recommend to people? So that there are specific instances where I would recommend using a probiotic, something that will sort of ideally restore the healthy bacteria that we have in our gut. And one of those is when people use antibiotics. So antibiotics are normally a good thing to take when you have an infection. Mm -hmm. So there's a bad bacteria that's causing a pneumonia or a urinary tract infection, whatever it may be. But it doesn't just kill the bad bacteria. Mm. It also kills the good bacteria, that bacteria that we've had in our intestines for a long period of time that keep us healthy. And they can destroy that microbiome and it can turn into this unhealthy state. And that's where people get C. diff infection, among other things. And probiotics, we hear of those type of supplements. Do you do you uh, talk to your uh, patients about those? There's been a couple of studies looking at the use of probiotics for an, quite a bit of different um, GI diseases, mm -hmm. whether it's irritable bowel syndrome or inflammatory bowel disease. Um, or just general, you've just things aren't right in your gut. Mm -hmm. There's some utility for using probiotics in those scenarios, um, but typically I will recommend that patients take it when they're taking antibiotic to try to help restore the gut to its normal homeostasis. Okay, and what what do we know about the way? I know there were some studies at Mount Sinai about the way you were born, whether it's cesarean or normal birth, would affect your microbiome. What did those studies show? So we see dramatic differences in babies who were born via C-section or through a vaginal delivery. And it has to do with what bacteria they first were exposed to. So if it was a normal vaginal delivery, they get exposed to a vaginal flora, and that shapes who they are. If it was born via C-section, it might be the skin flora, when they touch their mother's skin. And that might be the initial bacteria that sort of, sort of is the basis for what their microbiome becomes. And we have seen that in C-section babies, they have increased rates of um, allergic conditions. So they can have increased rates of food allergies, they can have increased rates of asthma compared to vaginal delivery babies. And can that microbiome change after a while to eliminate some of those conditions? That is, um, we have to see. Okay. Um, so we're not, we don't have that data yet. Mm -hmm. But there's a lot of things that can affect the gut microbiome, not just the way you were born. Mm -hmm. um, in the first three years of your life, your microbiome sort of take shape. So you become an adult in terms of the microbiome when you, when you hit the age of three, give or take. And a lot of things, what did you eat? What did you get exposed to? Did you play in the dirt? Did you live in the city? Did you live in the woods? Uh, all those things can shape your microbiome to um, what it sort of looks like as an adult. All right, and lastly for um, our listeners and viewers, what can you do to keep your, um, your gut the healthiest as it can be? What do you advise? So um, I think a good, healthy lifestyle is the most important thing. So fiber, fiber, and more fiber. Fiber is your friend. Um, and that is what feeds our gut. It feeds the healthy bacteria. They thrive on fiber. That's what they use as their fuel source. Um, exercise has been shown to shape the microbiome as well. So again, all the, all the healthy things, that's what I would recommend. Well, thank you for being with us today. Thank you, Dr. Ari Grisbem. Pleasure. Thank you.